We will call the meeting to order. Welcome everybody to the Brunswick County Board of Education for July 2021. We're going to start out with a moment of silence, followed by the pledge led by Mr. Benton. Please stand. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at public address, uh, Mr. Green. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I believe we have three speakers tonight. Uh, policy number 2310 governs uh, the uh, speakers and the content. I need to read a portion of it. It says that uh, presentations will be limited to three minutes per person or three minutes per organization. We have three speakers, so that's no problem. And then the chairman. Uh, Discussions regarding particular individual employees, litigation, student records, or other matters which may be required to be kept confidential may not be discussed in an open forum setting. The chairman will have the chairman will have the responsibility to determine matters of discussion that may be inappropriate and could rule the speaker out of order if necessary. So I think the first speaker is Joan Hall. That's me. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Okay, uh, could you hand this out to every member of the board, please? Sir, I keep in time, or you keep in time. I actually went I found in mass from the University of Florida study. Okay. Good. Good afternoon, gentlemen Thank you. and ladies. Good afternoon. My name is Joan Hall. In the North Carolina Board of Education, if the, uh, if the North Carolina Board of Education is trying to teach two plus two equals five, how can we trust them that our children wearing masks in schools will keep them from getting sick? Think about young children with masks. They drop them on the ground. They put them in their pockets. They put them in their school bags and lunch bags. Just think about all the bacteria in those masks. If parents don't want their children to wear masks, they should be able to opt out. Also, why are we letting 11-year-olds get vaccinated without parents' consent? Aren't these the same children that are eating laundry pods? This is only the third time I've attended a board meeting. At my first meeting, I asked a teacher, is CRT was part of the social study standards. She assured me it was not. Then I find out James Ford wrote the program. Then I followed Catherine Truitt, and she said, no CRT. Now I find the board put out a glossary with CRT still in there. And what about this Jamie Falkenberry? Has an ethics complaint against him? because his wife is a lobbyist for not one, but two companies selling CRT programs to the state? How can the citizens of Brunswick County trust the state on CRT or masks? I told you at the first meeting, my family is biracial. I do not want to see my granddaughters in classrooms that are segregated by race or by wearing masks. The First District Court of Appeals ruled that mass mandates are unconstitutional. There are two mass studies that you need to look at. And one of them you have in front of you. 
uh, uh, that one is done by the University of Florida. A third of the mass contained uh, more strains of bacteria causing meningitis. One third were contaminated with uh, uh, dangerous antibiotic resistant bacteria and the third had pathogens that caused fever, ulcers, and acne, yeast infections, and strep throats. The German Federal Environmental Office study, they measured the baseline carbon dioxide level in masks and unmasked children. There is a concern wearing masks causes, I'm trying this word, hypercapnia. This is in turn leads to impairments like decision making and weight problems. Parents, grandparents, teachers, board. Let's not put this in our schools. Please, take it out. Let's protect our children. You need to be brave. Don't surrender. Thank you. Mr. Thomas Russell. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Tom Russell and I live in Bolivia. I want to thank you for taking a crucial step last month to keep our youth from being indoctrinated in the movement called critical race theory. But I fear this movement, which would completely and negatively transform our country, is not over. I know that many of you do not sign up for this fight, which is central to the very soul of our nation, but here we all are. I pray that you will meet this challenge. I'm sure that you already feel a lot of pressure from all sides, but I also recognize that in the final analysis, you'll do what is right for our youth, our teachers, and our nation. The federal government and big tech companies will be throwing a lot of free money your way to implement this, implement this hateful and decisive, destructive ideals into the minds of both our educators and our youth. Resisting that monetary windfall will be difficult. You will need to be forever vigilant, as the terms have already changed and will continue to do so, as observed in terms like active civics, cultural responsive teaching. All these terms are created to confuse the uninformed, but they're all from the same political playbook. Don't make the same mistake of those before you who blindly accepted Common Core and lost our educational independence forever. If our youth are led to believe that race is the lens through which all issues are examined, whether history, math, or science, then their aspirations for greatness will be stifled. Why would they strive to achieve their very best only to end up at the same spot as everyone else, as taught under equity based, based learning? principles. Critical race theory will create racial violence and divide our children. Our educational system should bring our youth together over shared American values, not tear them apart. In Loudoun County, Virginia, a Chinese woman who lived under the brutal communist Chinese regime of Mao Zedong addressed the school board and strongly objected its championing of critical race theory. She stated, and I quote, this is indeed the American version of Chinese cultural revolution. During the cultural revolution, I witnessed students and teachers turn against each other. We changed school names to be politically correct. We were taught to denounce our heritage. Red guards destroyed anything that was not communist, old statues, books, and anything else, close quote. Doesn't this sound familiar to the direction America is heading today? America's future is in our hands. It should not be in the hands of a group of elites, permanent governing class, or power-grabbing ideologues to define America for the 21st century and to turn it into communist China. It's up to us, the average common and regular American citizens, those right here in Brunswick County. We are the people whose task it is to preserve America's freedoms for future generations. Two days ago, on the 4th of July, some Americans celebrated the signing of our Declaration of Independence, which launched the greatest experiment in self-governance the world has ever known. 
This historical document was founded on the belief that all of us were created equal. Our founders, through great courage and sacrifice, defeated the greatest military power at the time to obtain our freedom. Yet, John Adams wrote to John Taylor on December 17, 1814, when he stated, Remember, democracy never lasts long. It soon wastes, exhausts, and murders itself. There never was a democracy yet that did not commit suicide. I pray that we are all up to this challenge to preserve those freedoms that were obtained at so high a cost. It is our duty now and forever to defend and protect that freedom just as it was acquired and preserved for us to enjoy today. Heather Marshall. Good evening. I'm Heather Marshall. I am a Brunswick County resident, taxpayer, and most importantly, I'm a mother. Um, I am commenting today on the transgender athlete policy. In 1964, Congress passed a law that women could not be discriminated against in sports. We are going backwards 70 years by allowing biological males to play on biological t female teams. Allowing a male to take a position on a team that a weaker biological female would take if the biological male had not tried out. When transgender athletes complete, compete against women, women's sports are no longer women's sports. They become unisex athletic events. This is about preserving women's sports. This is about making sure that we recognize that biology does matter and that there's fairness to our competitors who have worked and trained hard. Allowing males who identify as females to compete in girls' sports destroys fair competition and erases women's athletic prospects. Due to testosterone levels, men naturally have more muscle than women, allowing them to compete in an increased level. During infancy, males have 75 to 40 nanograms of testosterone. Females only have 20 to 80. During adolescence, and especially puberty, males can gain up to 1,200 nanograms, whereas the height of testosterone in females is only about 75 to 80. Men also, on average, have less body fat, larger lungs, a larger heart, longer legs, narrow hips, and a higher VO2 max, which basically measures oxygen during exercise, a male's average uh, VO2 max is 42 milliliters per kilogram per minute, where a female's is only 33. Males have more hemoglobin, which is the protein in the red blood cells that carry oxygen to the body's tissues. A male's average is 13 to 19 grams, where a female's is only 12 to 15. All of these differences combined are the reason why men and women's sports are usually separated. These comparis comparisons explain why competitive <coughs> sports have separated biological males from biological females and also why legal measures like the Title IX in the United States require institutions to set aside and protect separate and equal funding facilities and opportunities for women. In school, we teach our kids basic biology. XX chromosomes are female and XY are male. This is a simple fact. Biological factors have a huge effect on athletic performance. So regardless of how our child feels, they are either a biological male or a biological female. Our children have to wear masks because of science, but we are ignoring basic biological science here. My last question for board members that are supporting this bill is who are you serving because it's definitely not our children. Thank you. District Spotlight. Uh -huh. Mr. Simmons. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Uh, I figured a good spotlight um, this month, we just closed out the first uh, three weeks or so of summer school last month, and wanted to give you just a little sneak peek of, um, of some of the some of the kids, some of the staff inside, and spotlight them. Here we go. So a moment of silence, please. We have one of our uh, middle school students uh, seen here uh, in the science lab, and there were, have been some in very interesting and and definitely engaging activities going on at our summer learning uh, sites. North Carolina Public Schools, Department of Public uh, in Instruction, uh, even giving us a little shout out for the, the great hands-on learning. Uh, these photos, this is just a couple photos. We've got plenty of photos on Twitter and on our Facebook accounts, but uh, we wanted to also give them a, a public shout out, uh, a few of them, uh, while we're here. At board meeting, 
another science lab, this in the uh, elementary level, um, and you see a couple kids engaged and uh, working with one another. This looks like some kind of filtering exercise, but um, this one, if you look close up, the, the eyes, they don't lie, and you, you even though she's wearing a mask, uh, you can see it written all on her face that she's truly enjoying what they're taking part in right there. Uh, another one, this one, uh, uh, just a larger snapshot of some of the things going on inside our, our summer learning um, sites. This one I found, I've selected this one uh, to sh show you guys just because it, it speaks a little bit. You, you've got a student uh, heading in to summer school and back here it's a little, it's under the shade but you've got a couple educators waiting, uh, arms open, to welcome everybody in and uh, that's just what uh, defines the BCS family, from students to parents uh, to our educators and staff inside the school, community members as well. Uh, another shot from inside our schools, we've got smiling faces again with our staff uh, helping out to make sure that uh, uh, this summer learning program is a success for all the kids. Uh, this little fella in another photo you'll you'll find on uh, the, big, the larger selection of photos is all smiles. Uh, here, it, it tickles me because you've got smile, smile, smile. It's like a little side eye go action going on, but uh, cute nonetheless. Uh, and then finally, uh, something we're doing this summer just to let everybody know about uh, some of the things going on inside the school district is. Uh, behind the summer scene, so to speak. So if you go to our district website, www.bcswan.net, under district news right there on the main page, uh, you'll see this uh, summer scene. You click on that, it'll give you June highlights. If there's any survey results that have been done, you'll find them there. And we're going to do the same thing in July. Uh, in the summer uh, summertime, we'll do the same thing uh, in August before we kick things off. So there's a lot of I call it by the numbers. If you go go there, you'll see some of the stats from inside the schools, high school stats, uh, some of the things going on with the staff, and uh, it will be updated again in July. And if anyone needs, uh, we do have a tutorial. If sometimes websites are uh, can be a little overwhelming to some, or we have a, a tutorial on the on the Facebook page. You go, you just watch it, and we walk you through all the steps, all the places you can find helpful information, and that is your July Spotlight, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Daniel. <clears throat> so, ladies and gentlemen of the board, you have your uh, meeting agenda. Any corrections to the agenda? I'd like to strike action five, and I'm going to I'm gonna bring that as a policy first reading to the next board meeting, if we could, to the next uh, committee meeting. New committee structure. Correct. I'm going to just go ahead and alter that uh, oh, policy, with, and we'll bring it for first reading in the committee meeting, so that it second reading will fall on a major board meeting, if we could, sir. Next. That's committee. Anything else, Mr. Lim? I'd like to add in a discussion, uh, the conversation about masks for next school year. Make that discussion number. Make that discussion number one, and we'll discuss the next board meeting as the second item. Any other changes? Motion to approve. We have a we have a motion to approve. Second. With the changes of removing number five on action and adding mass to discussion by Mr. Benton. Second. Mr. Barger seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Ladies and gentlemen of the board, you have minutes from the regular meeting on June 8th and then the committee meetings on June 28th. Is there any corrections? Motion to approve. Motion. Second. Um, Mr. Barber makes a motion. Mr. Robinson seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 
Motion approved. Ladies and gentlemen, you have consent items that we discussed at committee. Um, I have a motion to approve. Motion. Mr. Mr. Benton makes a motion. Mr. Barger seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Action items. Ms. Rutledge. South London High School baseball field renovations. Yes. Board members. Uh, this item is what we discussed in committee. It was uh, where we had not received the bids for repair of this baseball field. We have received bids now, uh, and so I'm going to further explain the project. Um, the baseball field itself has poor drainage, makes the field difficult to mow and maintain. This causes postponements and scheduling issues for our school and, and other schools as well. A request for bid was advertised on the website on June the 14th for installation of a subsurface drainage system to resolve the issues associated with the poor drainage. An explanation of the drainage system was two issues. One, uh, the field is, uh, the outfield is almost completely flat, so we don't have good surface drainage. Uh, and the second thing is, uh, the groundwater level there is between 18 and 24 inches depending on where you are on the outfield and uh, we know that because the consulting engineer uh, did uh, geological testing to determine that. So um, the, the, uh, the system to, uh, to address the problem is doing two things. Uh, one, we're re-sloping uh, the outfield uh, to a 1% slope, uh, which, will, which will take the drainage, uh, you know, just naturally sheet drain uh, off the field way better than it does now. The other thing is, is we're putting in subsurface uh, sock drains. Is what I mean, it's a, a pipe that's covered with uh, filter fabric. Uh, we've got six four inch pipes, which drains to some six inch of the same and then to two large eight inch pipes which then uh, are going to carry water to uh, the wooded area behind the baseball field. Uh, in addition to that, to, uh, to handle the, the, uh, the sheet flow um, outside of the field of play, past the fence, so the, the, we'll have a new fence, we're going to have to regrade all of that. Um, we're we're going to cut some swales and ditches uh, to direct that water. So the maintenance of this system it will be to keep our ditches cleaned out and uh, the, the, uh, the, under, uh, the under drains, they'll have clean outs where we can, we can jet those drains and we can keep that cleaned out. Uh, five bids were received on June 29th. Carmichael Construction was the low bidder at $314,728. Uh, the consulting engineers reviewed the bids and recommends approval of the contract to Carmichael Construction. So staff recommends the board approve the contract with Carmichael, which would allow renovations to be done during the summer and the field be ready to play by spring. So this is not just a patch job. You are regrading the whole field in the surrounding area to it, it, right. The, 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 the biggest problem is, is the water table. And so these drains are at, a, the underground uh, drains are at a level that is slightly below that. So we're draining water that's there all the time, whether it's raining or not, away from the field. And then we're also taking drainage from the field, uh, you know, what's going down to those drains. And, but we're taking water off the top by regrading uh, regrading the top. So, yeah, we did this on the football field there in one corner mm -hmm. where we had a problem. But if you're if you're uh, if you're standing at the baseball field, and you're looking at the football field, and and you made you made four quadrants. The lower left quadrant had the same issue. We did that, and that fixed that problem. Okay. So you talk about maintaining the ditches. We have other ditches we're maintaining already. This is not a new service, correct? That's right. And, and, and going out there today, myself and Mr. Barger, along with you and other staff, you know, like you said, the success of maintaining any 
work that we're going to do will be maintained and keeping those ditches as a part of the scope of this project it is going to be to go in clean the ditches get them open to accommodate any drainage that we will have once these repairs are made that, so, that's that's correct and so, and, uh, and and I heard what the board said uh, at the at the committee meeting uh, and um, you know uh, we, we went back and talked about what improvements we can make process wise uh, just on fields where we have grass not only at the high schools but the middle schools uh, to you know to, to it's pretty good grass I mean, as long as you as long as everything's draining but where we get where we do have good drainage the grass is good uh, but uh, I think we can do a little better uh, and I think that's just uh, not a lot of money and but some process improvements second we have a motion to approve uh, three hundred and fourteen dollars fourteen thousand uh, dollars by Mr. Barger, a second by Mr. Robinson. Uh, I do want to comment that we did receive a letter from uh, the principal at South Brunswick urging the board to switch from this work to a turf field. Um, obviously, the board has leaned toward your recommendation, but I want to make a comment in relation to athletic facilities. Um, North Brunswick High School and West Brunswick High School have been in existence 50 years. As of today, neither one of them can play a home tennis match because of the lack of facilities we have in this county. Uh, I'll be the first to admit I have urged the board to consider turf as the as the exemplary way to fix this field. Uh, obviously there's no support for that. Uh, I think we've missed a grand opportunity. So with that said, uh, all in favor of the motion, say Mr. aye. Mr. Goodman, can I make one more comment sure. real quickly? Um, I too like the idea of a turf field and my position on that at this point would be to make that in a long range plan uh, possibly. Uh, currently, with the amount of money that it would take to go with the turf field, considering it would also have to include other fields and potentially accommodating other schools, with the curriculum issues that we currently have in the schools and the other funding that we're going to potentially have to provide right now, I just can't see myself, you know, investigating or spending that kind of money. I do agree with Ed that it's something in the future that we may have to address and I will support doing that but I do that in a long-range plan and looking at outside funding sources and doing so tax dollars you know as a taxpayer myself I, I just can't come to spending that kind of money yet uh, till we can identify some sources Mr. Lemon it's a unique opportunity for you to bring up tennis courts because I don't believe we're talking about tennis courts here and we've had emails going back and forth about fixing the tennis courts uh, with bond money um, I don't think anywhere in this contract they say we're not going to fix tennis courts. Uh, secondly, I believe this board needs to be more concerned about keeping water off the top of our students' heads while they're learning with our roof repairs that need to be made than put turf on a baseball field. Um, it's not being fiscally responsible to go with the turf field right now. Mr. Robinson and I did walk that today, and that outfield's like a golf course. Um, and I suspect that Sue and her staff and the contractor are going to put it back in an even better shape than it sits currently. Uh, many Major League Baseball stadiums have natural grass in them. They're not all turf. Um, we need to provide adequate and nice facilities for our students. But we got to remember, folks, we're on the Board of Education, not the Board of Athletics. And we have got to improve the education of our students in this county. And that is where my priority lies. Comment. Well, the difference in <coughs> turf cost versus this is, is what's the number in that? 1.7? Uh, uh, I mean, close to a million dollars. Well, you told us 1.5 last week. Uh, well, uh, is it, you know, 
I'm, I'm not the woman I used to be, okay. but it's a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's three. This is three hundred thousand, and and I, I believe the sheet I had in front of me was one point three, and I I I've kind of bumped it up because everything's more expensive right now. Um, so it's still a million dollar difference essentially from turf to grass. Yes. Which was the same difference in the football fields and the work you were going to do there. So we have the same exact scenario that we had when we did the football bill. Except that board had more guts than this board and took the step they needed to take. But with that being said, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Next item, item is uh, Ms. Quinlan, Social Emotional Learning. So this is actually our school mental health improvement plan that we are proposing. And I think it's important for us to note that our emphasis of this plan is school mental health. I know that there is a lot of terminology that is utilized interchangeably, um, particularly among many public disciplines. So I think it's important for us to note at this time that in Brunswick County Schools, we're focusing on school mental health. Um, we are really trying to make sure that we incorporate resources and we utilize strategies that allow children accessibility to school we recognize in our district that we do have high levels of poverty, with poverty become lots of different factors that impede children's ability to access school. We also recognize that coming from a pandemic and multiple hurricanes and, and loss that children are experiencing lots of trauma. They may come from abuse, they may come from neglect, they may be coming from another country and lost everything that they know and they may come and and speak a completely different language. So I think for our purposes, I, I want to emphasize that our goal is to support students and their mental health so they can access school. And with that, within our plan, we are required to um, create a, a plan. Within our plan, we do incorporate instructional strategies for basically teaching children how to be good people. How do you get along with your friends? Do you have friends? If you don't have friends, how do we make friends? Do you know how to get materials if you don't have it? If you're feeling sad, is there an adult you can talk to? Does somebody help you with your homework at home? Um, I, I think that in Brunswick County, the most important way that I can emphasize this is we have a more universal conservative approach to supporting children access school. And our plan really is about school. And with that being said, um, what kinds of questions now asked? Okay, so <clears throat> we want to let the community know that you and I and Mr. Benton met last week for mm -hmm. a couple of hours yeah. about social emotional learning. Yes. Um, so we wanted to emphasize that what's happening nationally and maybe in other parts of the state doesn't necessarily mean it's happening in Brunswick County. So, um, and there are positives about it, like finding out if there's a suicide risk or if there's abuse at home or if someone's hungry. I mean, we're all, we, we would all want to know that. Um, but with what you presented to us, um, and Mr. Benton and I looked through every module, every book, every sample lesson, uh, Dr. Oates provided us some as well. Um, what we see in Brunswick County is not what we're seeing <laughs> nationally or in other parts of the state. Um, you did reiterate that there is no data collection on the kids and no national database that the, the, collect, the data is going into. The only thing that we ask in Brunswick County is 20 questions. Do you feel safe at home? Do you feel safe at school? Do you have someone that helps you with your homework? Um, we saw the questions, we reviewed them, they're not invasive, they're not threatening. I'm going to try to pull it up real quick. Okay, Mr. Barger said he would uh, pull it up. Um, so, we've looked at all the stuff that you've presented to us, and, you know, we know it's been passed by the legislature, you know, and, but we wanted to just reemphasize that no gender identity, gender teaching topics, no racial 
topics, religious teaching, none of that is, is in, within the teaching. And that when the teachers are trained, that's not there. So within our staff of practice, we help children access school. Right. And when there are topics that are beyond school, then we do have community resources and family resources, and we do help make those referrals. There are situations and topics that occur in schools that are maybe beyond the scope of a school employee, even a school counselor or a school-based behavior specialist. And when we have situations that we're able to recognize that extend beyond our scope, then our role is to work with the families to be able to access services that maybe would be more appropriate to cover those topics that um, align with their family values. Our goal in Brunswick County Schools is to be able to serve every child and do that in the best way possible so each child has that opportunity to be a good person. But we also recognize that our goal is to serve families and we want to make sure that we provide them with resources as well. Um, also, the, um, the harmony. You know, they move the goalposts all the time. We use this in the elementary sure. school. Sure. We looked at that. Mr. Barger looked at it. What we currently have is, you know, what I know you vet a lot of things. I know you vet everything. Um, so I wanted you to speak to that, how you vet the resources. So we find that it's very important that we keep a good handle on those resources that are provided to our staff that are utilizing those resources. And we do monitor that and we do provide them with that support. We do um, monitor lesson planning. We do monitor those, those things that they can use. We do review them and provide them. We think it's important to give our, our teaching staff and our teaching staff being our student services staff as well, whether it's our counselors, our social workers, our behavior specialists, just like our math teachers, just like our reading teachers, just like our science and social studies. Um, teaching behavior is the very same way that we teach math, reading, science, social studies, and all of those other curricular areas. And so it is our responsibility as a district to also make sure that we monitor and support and align those things that align with our values and how we do business in Brunswick County Schools. And that's not to say that there are situations that don't arise that need our investigation and require us to provide some action. We will never say that there might not be something that we have to investigate and provide support to, but what we do is on the front end provide that support for our staff so they have good resources that support those basic tenets of character education, which is what we align with. Well, and I, you know, critical race theory was a, an issue a couple of months ago, or it's been ongoing. Um, no one on this board is for that. I mean, we're not to divide or to make, create division. Dr. Oates was a history teacher. He doesn't want things that aren't factual taught. Um, he's very, you know, aware of that piece of it. Um, and we know that this would fall under the policy of 7720, you know, that you're not, as a staff member, allowed to teach your personal feelings to a student. And we just want to make sure that our community knows that. For Brunswick County, um, and we don't want to go against things that are taught in the home. We can't we can't teach and parent in the school what parents are allowed to teach at home. So we don't we want to make that known to our community because we are the gatekeepers to our kids. That's right. And, and, you are absolutely and we've looked at I mean, Mr. Benton and I've looked at <laughs> numerous books and things that you've supplied us, and we appreciate you vetting. <coughs> and when you do the teacher training, we appreciate that as well that you know that's very specific that you know both sides need to be taught but you can't you know inject your own feelings on a child and we just you know don't want that to be the persona that what's happening nationally is what's happening in our county well, we do respect our families and we do know that our families are our partners I mean we know that whatever values they instill upon their children that is their choice our goal is to make sure that children can come to school and be safe, fed, loved, cared for, and learn because we ultimately want them to have good long-term outcomes. We're in the business of schools, and that's where we keep our, our procedures within that scope of how do we access school. Mr. Benton. I'm very happy with our what we went over. I mean, uh, we went through every page of everything there was, all these websites. Uh, we really went down the rabbit hole looking at everything. and. 
I, I was very impressed with your staff. You know, you when you look for an mm -hmm. item, you say I'm looking for something on fixing how a child feels sad or to teach them how to express their feelings appropriate and they went and looked for that item. We didn't adopt whole curriculums from places. We didn't take every, you know, whole chunks just to make life easy. They select one item or one lesson plan of what they were looking for and that's the way we need to do it. And uh, I think you guys did a great job with putting that together. And if there, I'd like to make a motion to uh, accept the uh, social emotional or the mental health plan as presented to the board. And if we need to do an up, if any of the materials get updated, we'd like to have that represented at that time. <clears throat> and be able to revisit it yes. at any time. Yeah. yeah, I think we made that clear. Uh, if there are any changes or any surprises, it will go before this board first. Surprises, so, uh, and, I, and I believe you said you would use the harmony that we have right now because the new harmony, you know, they move the goalposts constantly. They haven't unpacked everything yet. We don't know what's coming. And we find that the curriculum in general across the board, they're always moving the goalposts, and we have to stay on top of it. That's our responsibility. Um, but we do stick with those more conservative, universal items. And we do work with our staff and train them and how to utilize them and what the expectation is for our district. Um, and, it, and I reiterate, if there is a concern or a family has a concern, please, please bring that to district leadership and please bring that to us so we can support that. We want to support children and our goal is to support families as well. And I just believe as a parent, you need to be talking to your kids mm -hmm. about what's happening at school. Mm -hmm. And you have, should have that open dialogue, you know, as a parent. Because that's, I mean, I know you do that with your girls. I do that with mine. Um, what's going on inside the classroom? That's key because we, you can't just sit back and not be engaged with your kids. So, but I appreciate the time you spend a lot of time presenting <coughs> to us and supplying us with materials. So, and I appreciate your time sitting down as well, Mr. Benton, doing that. I'll second Mr. Benton's motion. Mr. Mr. Benton made a motion to approve. Mr. Robinson second. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Please. Critical staff and Senate, Mr. Foster. Good, Good evening, Board. I uh, just bring it back before you again um, the recommendations uh, regarding the critical staff incentives. We currently have a plan in place where. Uh, special education teachers, our math teachers, and CTE construction teachers uh, are eligible for a $5,000 incentive um, for newly hired teachers. Uh, staff has uh, made a recommendation that uh, we approve a clarification that will allow current staff who have not taught in a critical needs area in the past year with Brunswick County Schools if they were fully licensed and eligible for moving into one of those critical staff uh, positions that they would be eligible for the $5,000 incentive. Um, that recommendation is still on the table and then we also um, there was a request from the board uh, what it would cost for us to include a thousand dollar retention incentive for current staff <coughs> in these positions. Uh, we calculated that estimated cost at $148,557. Um, and we were we had made the recommendation that we wait until the state passes their budget before making a final decision in regards to implementation of that incentive. And I'm stand before you to answer, try to answer any questions that you may have. We've been rehashing the same thing for what is the third meeting now? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any issues with the way it's written now? I only support the second point, but that's for the you know, this the top one helps five people, six people change job titles. The bottom one thanks our staff who have been grinding in some of these difficult to fill positions with us for a long time and I just feel like uh, we should reward all of our staff, not just those who are swapping job titles over. I just think that's fair for our, you know, these folks who are really, you know, these EC people really put their hearts in. They're doing e homework 504s, IEP plans at home. I mean, this is, uh, 
this is tough. And same thing with math. I mean, we have math teachers pulling students out of their lunches and working with them and tutoring and and putting time in with these students. And I think we should be rewarding them. I mean, I think that's a very tiny price. We spend more than that just running training days. So I'm in support of the second over the first. I would agree with that. Any other discussion? I'm recommending both. You're going to recommend both? Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. um, we recommend to allow the um, internal candidates who are building, building the higher art staff positions or critical staff, critical needs areas, that if they haven't taught in those areas, they're currently in a different area that may be less difficult to attract candidates. Will they be eligible for both? Parts or only the one until they're five, until the two. No, you would only get the one. The, the one. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess. Suppose I could live with that. Mm -hmm. A motion to approve it. Yeah. Second. We have a motion to approve. And Mr. Carver and Ms. Moffitt second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board, the next item, <coughs> you've received uh, resumes for uh, the vacancy we have at BCC, <coughs> uh, Ms. Ellen Milligan and Mr. Quan Stewart. Uh, did we, uh, both of them are not, uh, very good resumes and qualified people. Uh, any comments on that? This position is uh, pretty vital to the Board of Education in that we have a lot of relationships with BCC and getting ready to build an early college over there soon. So the four representatives we have, uh, we have Mr. Frank Eiler, Mr. Bud Thorson, Mr. Les Tubb, and then we have this opening. I uh, will make a comment on that. I was only aware of this brought to the attention of the Board of the Open at the <coughs> committee meeting just over a week ago. Um, and it was only advertised on our website. Not everybody polices and monitors our website. And with that said, I think it needs to be put put out so more people can be aware that this is open and we can get some more applications to consider. I have no problem pushing it off until the next board meeting if we would like to do that. I mean, I don't think it's a pressing issue I mean, both candidates were good that expressed interest and uh, but I, I have I have no feeling one way or the other the other I, I do have a question um, with I don't we don't have a policy I'm not aware of as far as the advertisement but in addition to that um, is it possible for a Brunswick County Schools employee to serve in that capacity no the policy says no one of those candidates that you named as a Brunswick County School employee. Oh, okay. And, and like I said, I just wanted to get out to other people so they could have the opportunity to participate. Mm -hmm. And if it means putting it in the newspaper, putting it wherever, just the website is not good enough in my opinion. Was the posting, um, did the posting say that employees can't? I doubt if it said that. It didn't, I, it did, I didn't see that. Well, then that sounds to me like the posting was an error, so we need to repost it. Yeah. Fine. Very good. Everybody agreed with repost. Yeah. And put it out in additional sources as well. I think that's a good idea. Yep. Now we need to fill the vacancy uh, in a couple of weeks. So can we do this at committee? Yes, because we haven't passed any policy. We haven't. We don't have a policy in place to prevent us from passing in steering committee yet. So, <laughs> so uh, we could we could have a first reading and still have the old policy in place for until we pass the second reading. Our candidate. Uh, person who Dr. Williams left July 1. So we're, empty. Okay. we're a shorter person. I would be fine with doing that in committee. Right, so uh, uh, yeah, I, I would be okay with that. I would still like it before it be a public board meeting, but if, if it's the will of the board to do it in committee, that's fine. You just want to advertise it. Yeah, I, 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 want it to have, I want people to have equal opportunity to participate. Yeah. And since we don't have a precedent for that, you just want uh, local papers and the website, or what are your... Uh, I would definitely, Brunswick Beacon, Stateport Pilot, mm -hmm. possibly the Chamber, 
whatever methods that we have used in the past, mm -hmm. but we got to get it out better than just a website. Mr. Siemens, would you uh, check that policy? I'm pretty sure it says employees can't do that. So. Okay. Because make sure the posting says that so okay. the employees aren't putting in things that they can. Okay. Thank you. Um, ne next item is COVID vaccinations, Dr. Rose. At our last committee meeting, the board directed me to contact um, Brunswick County Health Services, contacted um, David Stanley and expressed to him um, the wish of the board to explore the use of our facilities for them to coordinate and oversee <coughs> um, possible vaccines for students. In talking with Mr. Stanley and also uh, Chris Harrelson and some of the other staff, I expressed to them that this would solely be a health services endeavor. Uh, this is not something that we would um, provide transportation for. They would be um, in charge of securing parental consent. We simply would be offering the facilities as a place to, to do this. And this is the proposed schedule that um, some of the health services staff came up with. The uh, five locations, as you can see there, and also the dates of those vaccinations. Um, as I communicated to you via email, I did say that we would not move forward on any further communication with health services until I heard the wishes of the board. And if this is something that you wish to proceed with, um, we can do that, and if not, and we can stop it here. I just need to know in which direction the board would like for us to go. So this was after I stepped off. So I, just so I'm caught up here and understanding completely on this, we are going to just give facilities as we would any other time with flu vaccines or any other time. We are just giving them facilities. The children are not in our care. Mr. Green's already said we have no liability on this. That's correct. Because it is a completely health department and school will not have started by the 18th. That is correct. So we have no effect on our operations other than giving them a building and having somebody be there to clean up afterwards. Correct. Okay. We're simply just providing the shelter. It's no different than when they were giving them in the college parking lot. Correct. Yeah, I believe to. Uh, Go ahead with the proposed schedule of location as presented. We have a second. Well, I was a, I was opposed to it, but I mean I know it's not, um, it's not during school. It has nothing to do with school. It's just a site, but that was just my personal feeling. I know that, I mean, you may not agree. But I just didn't feel like we should offer vaccinations to. The kids, but we're not offering them right, right. Yeah, that's just right. Well, this right. is all the health department. It's for anybody right. who wants to come, it's not just the students, right? It's it's an open vaccination it, clinic, just like they did at Odell, basically, right? My direction was for student vaccine, okay. So if they open it up to anybody who wants to go, if they want to open it up, that yeah, is totally I'm, something I'm that fine with. I'm fine with giving them our facilities, no different than Odell. I just am not going to make a choice for a parent or Correct. and I don't want them under our care getting them. Um, yeah. well, we're not forcing anybody to get vaccinated. No, no. I have, I'll second uh, Mr. Robinson's. Any motion. other discussion? Mr. Benton makes a motion that we Mr. make Mr. a motion. Mr. Robinson makes a motion we uh, provide facilities for vaccine. Mm -hmm. Mr. Benton seconds all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? I'm opposed. Next item is uh, discussion. Uh, mask. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, get an update from Dr. Rhodes on uh, the discussions about masks for next school year. I know many of us on the board here have uh, discussed it one on one. Uh, Ms. Moffat and I discussed it today about um, you know not having the masks uh, be mandatory next school year and just giving the option if somebody wants to send their student to school with a mask on, they can. But we're not going to make our students uh, wear masks. So can you just update us on where you're at in that process? One of, if you've been following the legislation, you know the Senate bill that was, I think, was free the smiles. Mm -hmm. It died on the floor. Um, that was to allow give boards of education 
the authority to make that decision locally. Um, I don't know where the General Assembly is with that bill as it stands today, um, but as your superintendent and who's one that is to give you a recommendation, my recommendation for this um, particular issue would be for parents to make that decision. If parents wish to have their children come to school with masks, they can be they can allow them to come to school with masks. But at the same time, we also have, and uh, Ms. Rutledge, correct me if I'm wrong, we should have a large stockpile of masks remaining in the event that um, we need to furnish them. So we can provide masks for students um, if parents wish to do so. But if parents are not wanting their child to come to school with a mask, my recommendation will simply be for them to do so without penalty of any sort. Can we discuss the summer school currently in? Currently in, we are still under the governor's yeah. under the authority. COVID toolkit. We're still under the toolkit. And that's what we don't know about next year. We don't have any authority to make any decisions ourselves currently on this. Because it passed the Senate, died at the House, House gutted it, rewrote it, passed it. Now they're in committee meeting, uh, conference committee right now. And there are some sticking points, so we don't know where that's going to go. Uh, it's ultimately going to come down to whether the General Assembly passes something or if the governor is going to uh, allow something different. Um, unfortunately, we just don't, I don't, we don't have control over this right now. Well, without continuously passing the buck, I think it's important for the community to understand that we are supporting the choice of the parents whether or not they want their students to wear the mask. Dr. O, you need any form of a motion to your recommendation? No, this is under discussion. This is, yes, under discussion, and also uh, it may, have, may be premature. That would be my right. recommendation yeah. to you. I don't know <coughs> why. Comes up. I'm fine problem. with that. I just want it to be known that where we stand, so yeah. when, when we're given that authority, and I Correct. hope we are, and for the folks out there that agree with what we're saying, call your representatives and your senators and yeah. tell them to get on the horn and do their part to give us that authority. Well, when I talked to Re Representative Miller, who was formerly on the board, he did say that he is seeing that it may lean towards a parent or a local school board decision. And then, you know, Mr. Lemon and I have talked about it, um, making it a parent decision. Whether you do or you don't, that's up to the parent. And nobody should be, you know, spoken to if you do have one on. And you shouldn't be spoken to if you don't have one on. It's a choice. It's a freedom of choice. And that's how, what I hope falls in our, our laps. We, uh, it looks like we support that. Would it be in our interest to present a resolution to this to them I think it'd be more of a we need a resolution is fine we need to request a local bill if we can't get a yeah. statewide bill but the local bill doesn't require the governor's signature right so do both yeah, yeah. and I've yeah. talked to Charlie about a local bill um, but he was waiting to see like you know what and Mr. Benson so should said we start with a resolution the they're all hesitant to do anything right now until that bill is officially goes out of conference and it gets vetoed and then there's going to be a mad scamper on who's going to get what what counties are going to get on that so i think we're probably best to just hold our horses see what happens i mean for all we know we could get a supreme court ruling or some kind of ruling from the state supreme court on it and we might get lucky and just self-dissolve i just think the more we sit on something the more things could go wrong but. yeah be proactive be proactive <laughs> right. I think we add layers where we can so that we can fight for our kids. Yeah. <coughs> Dr. Oates, do you have any other things for discussion? I just want us to be um, aware, I think everyone is, of the tropical storm that's out there. Uh, we, of course, been updated and stay in contact with emergency services and National Weather Services and those parents who have students in our summer school right now. Uh, please pay close, close attention to the weather. We may be making some decisions in the next couple of days, so um, I just want everybody to be aware that that is on the horizon. I think we'll know more tonight and in the morning. I think we could have an impact with Thursday. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully not, but. And I'm going to err on the side of caution either way. Yeah. Yeah. But just back to where we were talking about, I will, sometime between now and the next, I'll put together something, possibly a resolution we can do. I'm going to go ahead and move on it. I'll, I'll, um, I'll talk to Dr. Uh, Representative Miller too okay. to see if we can't find I'll out have more about to put what's together. Going on. Okay. Yeah.
Second. Motion to go to closed session. Motion. Second. A motion, Mr. Broder, to go to closed session. Ms. Moffitt, second. All in favor, say aye. 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 aye.